Greetings wrestling fans, Patrick here and today we're going to be doing another Smackdown review. Once again another excellent show, there were still some things that I didn't really, uh, there were still some things that, you know, that weren't really all that great, but it was still a good show regardless. You see, you see, you ignore the filler, you ignore the stuff you don't like, and you, and you just talk about the stuff that you did like. And when it comes to a show like Monday Night Raw, that's very impossible to do. But when it comes to SmackDown, there's some things I generally don't really care about. Like, I didn't care for the Vikings and Mahal and Shanky and the Happy Folks stuff. But generally, overall, outside of those two things, the show was still generally good. I think people should try... I think people should try to be more like me. Instead of just trying to be all like, Oh, you're just favouring Smackdown because it's better. No. Raw just needs to be better. Anyway, we start off the show with something refreshing for, for a change. Instead of a 20 minute promo. We start off with a match. We had Tony Storm and Sasha Banks take on Charlotte Flair and Shopsy Blackheart. And this match ends with... This was a great match, by the way. I really enjoyed this match. If you haven't seen this match, go back and check it out. It's a great match. And in the end, my girl Tony picks up the pinfall victory on Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair took a clean pinfall loss. This is something that Roman Reigns hasn't done for the better part of nearly two years. People, people like to say Charlotte's a lot like Roman, but at least Charlotte is actually willing to take a loss. At least she will actually lay down and get pinned. Now hopefully, with Tony Storm getting this victory over Charlotte Flair, I, I'm only hoping nothing more but sky's the limit. For Tony Storm. That is all I'm, that's all I'm worried about now. All I gotta hope is, is that this just wasn't a temporary victory, and this is just gonna be forgotten about. Beating Charlotte is a big deal. Beating Charlotte is a big deal. This has to lead, not only to a championship match, which will happen next week, which I think will end by disqualification. It needs to lead to Tony Storm being featured more often because man the crowd were obviously behind Sasha Banks. The crowd popped for Tony Storm when she got the pinfall victory. Not even Rhea Ripley unfortunately. As much as I love Rhea Ripley but not even Rhea Ripley has been able to pin Charlotte Flair. Tony Storm has already beaten Charlotte Flair and that's a big deal. It's a big deal to me. It's, it's a big deal to me as a, as a fan of Tony Storm, and it's a big deal to Tony Storm to beat Charlotte Flair. Not many people can beat Charlotte Flair. So it's a big deal. I hope it leads to good things, and big and better things for Tony Storm in the near future. Yes, it was a roll-up, which is something I don't really like, but... I'm, I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna let it slide this, this, this time. Not just because it's Tony, because I feel like they wouldn't have Tony Storm hit her finisher and pin Charlotte anyway. This is like generally the way to this is generally the way Charlotte ever loses matches these days. It's by it's by roll-ups. So I'm gonna let it slide just for this just this once. And then we get uh, the Viking Raiders versus Shitty Mahal and and uh, Shanky. Viking Raiders got the win, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Then we get Drew McIntyre and uh, the Happy Folks. Or as I like to call them, the Crappy Folks. Crappy Corbin and Crap Cat Moss. What do you call a Baron Corbin? Baron Snorbin. Even I can make better jokes than Mad Cat Moss. But anyway, Drew got his sword back, and that's all you need to know. 
Ridge Holland, he battled Cesaro in a rematch here. What happened to From the Higher Plane? I will show the game, or whatever his theme song was. The, 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 the theme song that played in Liv Morgan's video package that week. Did they seriously, are they seriously not giving him that music anymore? Like, that was a good theme song. Ah, oh, whatever. But Ridge Holland would get the win here. He would win due to distraction by Sheamus. So Ridge Holland gets uh, his win back from two weeks ago. Naomi squashed Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler in about 10 seconds, which was very, very satisfying to see happen. Naomi won in about 10 seconds against Shayna Baszler. How's that push going there, uh, Shayna? How's that push going? How's that push coming along? It's it's so it's so satisfying to see Shayna Baszler lose. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't get why people like her. I just don't get why people like her. She's she's trash. She she sucks. And then we get the New Day versus the Usos again. Look, I know the matches are great and all that, but man, very, very, very repetitive stuff. The New Day would once again defeat the New Day. The New Day would once again defeat the Usos. And we're going to be getting this 12-man battle royal thing to determine the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. Hopefully, whoever wins it ends up dethroning... Uh, Shinsuke, well, I guess as long as it's not Jinder or Baron Corbin, I guess I'll be ha I'll I'll be happy with whoever wins as long as it's not Baron Corbin or Jinder that dethrones him. Hey, I'd even be fine with Shins with uh Sami Zayn uh, knocking off Nakamura and regaining the IC title. Hell, he deserves it after all the after all the things he's uh, gone through. And if he's re-signed, you may as well reward him. But apparently that's not allowed. Apparently, when you re-sign, you shouldn't be allowed to win championships. But, whatever. Um, then we get to our main event. It's Roman Reigns. He uh, fires Paul Heyman from his duties as his um, special counsel. And then out came Brock Lesnar to save the day. Man, Brock Lesnar had the overalls on. But if he had, but if he had a red shirt, all he needed was a red shirt, and then he looked like Super Mario. Seriously, he almost looked like Mario minus the red shirt. But yeah, Brock stood tall on this very episode of SmackDown. And next week is Christmas. Next week is is Christmas. I don't know if I'm going to be able to review SmackDown next week. Because I'm going to be doing Christmas stuff. I'm pretty sure I can put it on record and just give my thoughts on it. But yeah, that's Smackdown, guys. And honestly, it was a very good show. The re th this is why Smackdown is better. Because there's people I'm invested in. Storylines I'm invested in. And I'm invested in the Charlotte Tony stuff. Just get rid of the pies. Get rid of the pies and you're all good with that. Naomi and Sonya's storyline, I was falling off on it, but now I'm getting back into it a bit more. The New Day stuff and the Usos, eh, that, eh, I'm 50-50 on that. And the Roman storyline is definitely one of the better, best things on, um, de definitely one of the best things on the show. So, yeah, that's why I enjoy SmackDown, because there's so much more to enjoy and invest in. Than Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw isn't really giving me anything to invest in. Maybe outside of Becky and Liv, but that's really about it. So anyway, guys, that is all I've got for you guys for this SmackDown review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up, comment your thoughts and opinions down below, and I will see you all next time.